Welcome, Suzanne, to Program 1 webinar. How are you? Really good. Thank you for having me. Good, good, good. Yeah, excited to speak to you today. Um, I'm just going to give a quick rundown of how you know this webinar is going to go. So <clears throat> I'll just give an introduction about myself, you know, what I did, did before uh, Program 1. And I'm going to go through this document as well, uh, Program 1 Introduction to Recruitment. Uh, kind of give anyone who's interested in coming into this industry an insight of how, you know, what to expect. Um, yeah, what to expect, anything related to recruitment in general. And then at the end, I'll ask Suzanne some questions about her personal career, her journey into getting to where she is today. Um, she will also share some tips and advice that, you know, she um, picked up along the way to kind of share with any new recruiters looking to join hopefully Devil Smith one day. So um without further ado, uh I'll start by introducing myself. So my name's Atar. Uh I took on the career outreach lead at program one earlier this year. And you know my aim is to increase the talent flow coming through the project of uh people that identify with black heritage. Um ultimately we're trying to diversify the entire recruitment industry with more black recruiters so program one is partnered with 11 award-winning recruitment agencies who have all committed to providing the best diverse and inclusive environment for anyone interested in a career in recruitment now um, my background isn't really recruitment related i actually started as a footballer um, at the age of four and yeah football football's been part of my life you know ever since and it's not until last year where you know i kind of figured that you know it's maybe best that i kind of stay open to different career paths um you know i was always lucky from young that i had people around me to kind of tell me that you know you keep your options open um but you know i do see every day that there's a lot of young footballers especially that you know, kind of put all the eggs in one basket and you know football is a very ruthless environment um, industry so not everyone makes it, unfortunately and uh for those players that don't make it they're kind of left you know back on square one you know figuring out what to do next with their life and you know i was unfortunately not one of those people i kind of had uh people around me telling me that you know keep your options open really um i didn't know what i wanted to do if it wasn't football to be honest with you, I never really gave it gave it much thought. Um, so, so it wasn't until last year that um, I got an opportunity to come for an interview at one of the partner agencies, Goodman Masson, for a recruitment role. And you know, like I said, I don't I didn't have much knowledge about recruitment in general. Um, what I knew is that it was probably a job that you have to come in a suit and you know work long office hours. Um, so, but one thing about me is I never kind of, you know, say no to opportunities. I'm kind of open to giving things a, a go. So and I took on the interview and unfortunately I didn't get the job. Um, but, you know, leaving the interview, I kind of realized that, you know, this is this might be something that I could do potentially in the future. And, you know, the following year I got approached by the CEO of Goodman Masson and, you know, he had a project that he was working on, Program 1. And he thought I was the right fit for the job. So, you know, ever since then, I've kind of not looked back. Um, you know, I've enjoyed my time here. And I guess really what the point of kind of my story is that you can really start anywhere. And, you know, you can ultimately be in the recruitment industry with zero background, um, no qualifications. I didn't go to university, you know, uh, straight out of college. I kind of focused on my football career. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the whole aim of me explaining that so what i want to do is just briefly go through this document that explains what you know the benefits and a typical day as a recruiter would look like so here are a few benefits of working in recruitment reward opportunities from team of the month lunches to quarterly top performer performance clubs to super trips, um, 
much more incentives that a few of the agencies have you know to try and reward their employees um it is a job that you know you put in the hard work you'll get rewarded so um yeah a lot of rewards in regards to that career development opportunities into market leading billers um so when you do get into one of the partner agencies something that every uh, office has committed to is kind of providing a good career development career development plan for their employees um, in order to kind of maximize their potential and making sure that they do reach their you know uh, maximum um, potential essentially and um, that's something that we definitely value um, actually um, being by our employees and you know giving them the tools and resources that they need to, to grow High earning potential with average on targets earning of 30 to 50k in your first year, 50 to 80k in your second year, and 100k above in your third year. So, you know, the money potential in recruitment is very high. Um, you know, it's a salary based job, and, you know, you do get a commission on top of that. And essentially, the commission is where, you know, the real money kind of comes in. But the agencies that I work with actually have market leading commission schemes so you'll definitely you know like I said before the the rewards will definitely be given you know based on your hard work um and yeah well-being support diversity and inclusion is something that we're definitely you know pushing in every agency to try and make sure that every recruiter that does come in actually enjoy working in the environment you know that they fit in and feel like they belong so that's just a few benefits. Typical day as a recruiter. Now it's a sales based job. So, you know, you're expected to be winning new businesses by cold calling, meeting and networking with key clients, um, you know, having the communication skills and confidence to talk to people they haven't spoken to before, spoken to before is very key. Um, you'll be doing a lot of that. Um, developing client relationships by calling and hiring managers so like i said talking to people that you haven't spoken to before and these are you know typically senior people so you know having that confidence you know to you know present yourself to the best of your ability and essentially um, winning business for your agency is key you'll be vetting candidates by speaking over the phone meeting on teams face to face matching the best candidates to what your client needs managing interview processes from start to finish, um, preparing your candidates for their interviews, talking and relaying feedback from your client and candidates. So all of this relates to having good communication skills and being very, you know, reliable, um, you know, confidence, all of that is um, included in, in those kind of day-to-day um, -day tasks. Uh, negotiating rates, fees, terms and business and offers, um, being money motivated is a very key attribute to being a very good recruiter. You know, you need to be hungry to make money. Um, otherwise, you know, you simply won't succeed. Um, so, yeah, like I said at the bottom, you'll be working in a sales role with the aim of generating and winning businesses, finding the best talent for your clients and generating rev revenue for your organization. So if you look at the top corner, it says it's all about placing as many people as possible your company doesn't get paid unless you make placements. Um, so it just refers to, you know, being very money hungry. Um, you know, it's all about making money and you will get rewarded. Um, no doubt about that. So, you know, you've shown interest in recruitment. What are the recruitment agencies looking for? So they're looking for someone who understands they'll be working in sales and is excited by the opportunity that that provides. So what I mentioned before is a fast paced environment. You know, you'll be working to hit targets on a regular basis. And, you know, sales involves a lot of uh, communication. Um, so understanding that and, you know, being excited to talk to people regular um, is definitely something that um, you, you need as a recruiter. Have an excellent attitude from working with your team to representing your organization brand. Now, what an excellent attitude might mean as well is you know, being resilient. You know, there'll be a lot of times you make calls and 
you know, you don't get the results that you're looking for. You know, it's all about having the attitude to kind of move on from that, not kind of think about it and kind of move on to the next one. Like I said, it's a fast paced environment. So you need to be ready to kind of produce on a regular basis. You need to have a growth mindset. Recruitment is a steep learning curve. You need to have the mindset of wanting to get better every day. Now, what I said that the agencies do have excellent career progression um, in, installed and plans for every recruiter and employee, but ultimately that doesn't, you know, mean anything if the recruiter himself or herself are not ready to, you know, develop themselves as a recruiter. So having that growth mindset to better yourself every day is very key. Um, and then, you know, like I mentioned before, resilience, self-management, entrepreneurial thinking, um, being able to think well on your feet, it's all part of having um, or being a good recruiter. Now, I want everyone to kind of ask themselves these few sentences or read these few sentences. And, you know, if you identify with them, then recruitment might be the career path for you. So do you want to challenge? Are you able to progress your career quickly? Are you money motivated? Do you want to be rewarded for your hard work? Are you excited by the idea of uncapped commissions? Do you want to work in one of the UK's biggest industries? And do you want to work in a dynamic and exciting environment? Now, if you've read those sentences and you identify with a few of them, not maybe not all of them, but maybe a few of them, then definitely consider recruitment as your next um, career. So I've kind of gone through, you know, what day to day looks like. Now for an entry level recruiter, they would typically be looking at around a 20 to 25K salary base. Obviously I did mention that it's a commission on top base salary structure. So, um, you know, the commissions is where essentially you'll make your money. Uh, the money potential I did go through before is very high. So, you know, 30 to 50K in your first year is definitely possible. You know, 100 plus K in your third year. You've seen that all the time. Uh, many recruitment trainees have reached director level at their respective companies within five years. So that career progression, you know, constantly evolving over time is, you know, definitely possible. And you should definitely strive to achieve those kind of targets. So with that kind of said, I want to go over to my guest here, Suzanne, and I want to go through her personal journey, you know, into her current role at Devil Smith. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, really. So, um, Suzanne, Far away. Hi, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do you mind just going through, you know, what you were doing before um, yeah. recruiting? So, yeah. Yeah. So, I had, uh, I've only been in recruitment uh, coming up two years. So, I had a long career prior to this in uh, a state agency. Yep. Um, and then I moved into, then I had my family and I moved into relocation and I was a, um, had a small consultancy doing um, property relocation. Um, so I've always worked within property world. Um, well, as you know, Devil Smith is a property recruiter. We recruit across the whole space. Of, yep. uh, so I had that familiarity um, within the industry. Yeah. Okay, that's that sounds good. And just talked about just talk about you know your time, you know, in school. You know, is university something that you no, went to? Didn't yeah. Do you, no, I didn't. I um, did GCSEs, then did A yeah. levels, and then wanted to get out and earn money. You know, yeah. eighteen. So I, I, my life started um, in a state agency, earning you know 12 grand a year um yeah. as a you know office admin and then you know it, it it went from there um similarly you know a lot of what you were talking about the drivers in recruitment you know the estate agency it was for me back then it was similar you know that sort of hunger to progress to earn money um you know where you saw a different career path you know was there for me so no I didn't I didn't do um I didn't go on to university and yeah, that's the beauty of that's the beauty of, of sales really I think because you don't have to 
have you know you don't have to have that yeah absolutely you know there are graduate schemes in in, in various companies um that you can take but it's certainly not a stipulation yeah that's very interesting as well because um you know what i usually find is you know a lot of people that i've talked to recruits um especially they come from a sales background you know um that's kind of the kind of theme that i've noticed yeah. do you feel like you know that's recommended or can you literally just come I, from any background i think i think it's about personality so i don't think you necessarily i i, I for me i think there's an element that there's there's an actual sales person in you you'll want to do this you know if you're you, you've got to want to have that instinct right um yeah. but you might be in something completely different which is the wrong job for you and then you think hold on but i i really like to do that but i have no idea of getting into it yeah. um I, I think it's probably what you're saying um so i think that there are yeah i mean listen there's so much opportunity for people that don't have a sales background to come into this i mean we here i'm just thinking of backgrounds we have varying backgrounds of of um you know people here at devil smith from you know people that have had like acting careers to have worked in shops to you know you know i was in stage insurance, you know various backgrounds yeah. yeah generally people facing right because you're used to dealing with clients and you've got that yeah. Ability yeah, so it all goes back to form. having, you know, the communication skills and, you know, that natural flair for sales. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that makes sense. Um, just talk to me about your um, time at Devil Smiths. Now, obviously, you got a job at Devil Smith. Um, talk to me about your interviews. You know, was there a period where you, you know, struggling in the interview stages? And, you know, how, how was that interview at Devil Smith different to your previous interviews? See, it's difficult for it's different. It's a different one for me because I joined in the pandemic. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it was, as we all know, such a weird time. So I guess it wouldn't be. Uh, it wasn't typical because I was doing everything like this on Teams, which was alien, right? Because yeah, you know, we hadn't done interviews before um online so that was all a bit alien and actually when i did come to the office there was nobody here well there was a small handful of people here so actually yeah. my you know my interview and onboarding here was very different to the reality of, of what it is today um but you know typically uh it's a you know three stage three stage interview and i think yeah i mean it's I think if anybody says that, you know, interviews aren't daunting, they're probably lying. Yeah. I haven't actually interviewed um, for, oh, my God. I want to say, this will show my age, mm. uh, it must have been about 18, 19 years. Oh, really? So, yeah, it was a really long time because I've been at my previous role forever. And yeah. then when I had my kids, I did my own thing. So yeah, it was a it yeah, it was really daunting. And I would say that the whole process, more so not even the interview, but starting the role was probably the most scariest thing I've ever done in my adult life, you know? Yeah, yeah. Moving into moving into something completely different, right? You're out of your comfort zone. Um and yeah, so I found, you know, my journey into it, I think, was a roller coaster. Yeah. And so, I think that is the case when most people change jobs. But I think in recruitment, I think there are so there are there are lots of plates always spinning that you and you've got to kind of yeah learn them all. You're like, well, OK, so, yeah, it's a head spin at first. Big time. Good stuff. Good stuff. And obviously you secured your job at Devil Smith. So, um, you know, talk to us about your career progression and your time at Devil Smith. Um, yeah, so listen, I I work on a team. Um, I work on a team that we recruit for a state agency. Yeah. Um, so I've been, on, we, there, we have various teams here. Um, I've been on that team since I joined. 
Um, and yeah, it's it's great. I mean, in terms of you know progression, um, I'm a consultant, um, and that's where that's I'm comfortable at that consultancy level. Yeah. Um, there are there are various other roles to progress to, and I think during my time here, I've seen many of my kind of counterparts sort of you know fly up fly up the ladder so to speak yeah. um this company gives so much progression and going back to when you were talking about in you know in the in your in uh the beginning about um time yeah i'm working hard and that point you made that you know people can become directors within within five years that is 100 percent a possibility here yeah. um so i think yeah recruitment definitely offers that um Good stuff. And just talk to us more about, you know, incentives or things that Devil Smith have put oh my in gosh. place. Yeah. yeah, there are so there are so many. Yeah. Where do I start? Where do I yeah. start? <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, my God, I think that is if you are somebody that gets a buzz from being identified and that target, you know, yeah. oh, my God, this is I, mean, I, I feel like I'm like literally Devil Smith. <laughs> but um yeah it t- totally is there we have oh my gosh um quarterly incentives um i was really fortunate to go on one earlier this year yeah the day at ascot um oh, nice. which was amazing yeah so much fun um we have sort of department um incentives and it might be things like you know you hit a target and you might win a, a voucher you might get like yeah i don't know a, John Lewis voucher or a Just Eat voucher or Pizza Express or something like that. Yeah. Um, just kind of like really upping that um, sort of team morale and competitiveness. Um, so, yeah, we've always got something going on in terms of um, incentivizing the team, you know, drinks, lunches, um, you know, just 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 general sort of jollies that make people feel really appreciated, I think. Um, yeah. and rewarded for the for the hard work because it you know it's hard it is hard work so you know sometimes it's relentless you mentioned that as well like it can be really relentless sometimes you know you're on the phone you're calling you you sometimes you feel like you know I'm constantly um hitting a brick wall so to have those kind of highs that come and you know just offer you another um yeah. Uh, yeah yeah it's, it's interesting that you mentioned the you know the uh, not, not, not the harsh reality, but, you know, you're expected to have a certain calibre of, you know, um, flair or quality in your in your work. So do you feel like in terms of meeting those targets on a regular basis, it's, is, is, is it something possible or? Oh, God, yeah, it's, 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 I think that the thing is, when you're in sales and certainly in recruitment, no, no week is ever the same, no day is ever the same. So some yeah. weeks you're flying and you're like, what, well, you know, you're you're on a roll and everyone's talking to you, everyone's answering the phone, and it's kind of like tick, tick, tick. And then some weeks, it it just is a bit flat. And there are obviously external factors sometimes that that come into play, um, you know, um, that just mean that you have a little, you know, it, it can be tougher. Um, yeah. it's uh, it's absolutely doable you have to have a, a you know a certain mindset obviously because if you're going to get into the office and you're going to sort of faff around and chat and go for breakfast and have a coffee and then go oh god it's 12 o'clock and I haven't done anything you know I haven't hit yeah. my targets well you know you're the only person to blame really yeah. so you definitely have to be a, a self-starter um, but there is real autonomy to the role because you know you plan your day as you see fit so yeah, it's about there's a certain amount of um, self self control, I think. Yeah. Um, in oh. order to kind of hit those targets, but it's absolutely doable and achievable. Amazing, amazing. And you know, I just want to go back to you, you know, if you could go back in the past and give your give yourself, you know, some advice, or maybe stuff that you probably didn't do well, or yeah, yeah just. What, what yeah, there's mean? a lot yeah. actually, because hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So yeah, yeah there's, of course. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think I would have taken my time more and not panicked, because I think, because sales is so you know it's fast paced. It's you know you're you're on the phone and you think oh, I've, I've got to do it now, and then you're surrounded in an office looking at other people, and so, you know you know that phrase like 
you want to run before you can walk and I look yeah. back now and I think okay I didn't I could have slowed down yeah I needed to learn a little bit more and just take it on and breathe and wait because the biggest you know time is what you need in recruitment because it doesn't happen overnight you need to yeah. really work on it and somebody actually told me and I and I thought what I've been here it I don't know about 10, 10, 11 months. And somebody told me that you need two years in recruitment before you, it clicks and you really, and I thought two years, oh my God, yeah. that's like a lifetime. And I'm literally at that point, yeah. just coming up to that point, And I'm like, that is the, that is the best advice ever. That yeah. is the best advice ever, I, I think. You Nothing definitely million. need, yeah, 18 months, two years. It's just time. Time is the one big thing I would say. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't come naturally to somebody who's used to fast pace and salesy, right? So that's yeah. the exactly, exactly. So I assume you're referring to maybe you know quality over quantity. Um yeah, well, quality over quantity to a degree, but I think you know, naturally salespeople want to get there. Yeah, they don't want to get they want to get there now. Yeah. So that and that's a you know obviously that's an individual thing and it's personal to each per you know to each individual um you know but for me I definitely wanted I thought all right well okay I I know this industry that I'm working in you know yeah. property but I don't know recruitment so I've got to learn that yeah and I needed to you know as I say in hindsight just sort of step back and take a bit of time to get to know all the processes, understand the language. Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't no, run before amazing. you walk. Yeah, don't run before you walk. He said it. Um, yeah, so just, you know, just to finish off, do you have any key tips or advice for anyone coming into the industry fresh? Um, yeah, what should they kind of um, keep in mind uh, coming into this? I think allow, this? Allow, allow time and don't make judgment too quickly. Yeah. I think it is key um, and organisation. I think I have learned and this is quite recent for me after, you know, a long career, but still, you know, make time to make lists and be organised because in recruitment, you are constantly spinning plates. Yeah. So you're speaking to a candidate, you're then speaking to a client, and then you have to write a job ad, and then you have to go and speak to somebody in the office, and you know, and then you've got a team's call, and 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 then yeah. there are different jobs, and there's so much to think about that you know, good old fashioned list making, um, an organisation. I mean, that's something that I've learned, and I'm still learning. I think we're always still learning, right? You yeah. never, you've never got the answer. Yeah. Um, nobody's got the answer, but that's something that I would recommend to anybody. Just allow time, be organised and make lists. And yeah, I'm always um, great at doing those things. But yeah. Yeah, and no, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Um, listen, it's been very great speaking to you, Suzanne. Oh, um, so nice to chat to you, Anthony. Yeah, and you know, I'm sure that anyone, you know, listening to this definitely left with some good advice and tips. Um, so yeah, thank you for taking this time to speak to me. You're very and, welcome. Thank yeah. you for having me. That quest, that quest. Um, program one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if anyone is interested in, you know, applying for a recruitment job, you can go to the program one website. Um, that's program one dot com. You can also follow. You can all also follow program one on LinkedIn and Instagram. Trying to um catch up on daily updates. Um, you, you can also email me at a dot jedu at program one.com and if you have any questions regarding anything that we've just spoken about or just recruitment in general always feel free to reach out to me i'll answer that i'll answer that for you um so yeah without further ado thank you suzanne for thank speaking you. to us today have a great um, week you too you too thanks again nice bye, one. bye.